Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Hi guys, today's video is prompted by a response that we received on our Facebook page. This is our Facebook page for Han-Tech LLC. You can reach it by typing in your browser www.facebook.com forward slash Han-Tech and that is the direct link will take you to the Facebook page. It's a good thing to get into this page and go ahead and like the page. That way you will be updated every time a new video is posted. Every video that I publish on YouTube, I do post to this Facebook page so that you can be immediately made aware of any new videos that come out. Okay, so the request came in to produce a scan based on the TTM squeeze, as I've got here on the chart, as well as the RSI and MACD histogram. The gentleman said that he was struggling to combine these three into a scan, and I thought, well, okay, I can do that pretty quick. Now, when I created this indicator, and it says squeeze MACD RSI, this bottom indicator with the blue line, you see that small little spike right there? What we'll do is we'll break that down. I'll open it up. You can look at the code. If you need to see a step-by-step -step on how to combine the code for a MACD and an RSI into a single indicator, then I'll link in the upper left-hand corner here for the next 30 seconds to the video I did previously and that video breaks it down step by step. It shows you how to take the code from each of the indicators, combine them into your own custom indicator, and then modify it so that it produces these little uh, zeros and ones. Zero for false, one for true. So all you do is you build the formula uh, so that it evaluates to either true or false. And that is what the scanning tool is going to use. If you need to see how to do that step by step, it's in a previous video. In this video, however, it's going to be more of a summary. I'm going to show you how the indicator is built, and then I'm going to show you how to combine the indicator with the squeeze into the scanning tool. Now, before I go forward, I want to show you that this spike here is per the gentleman's request. He wanted to see when the MACD turned positive. So what I'm using here is a two bar pivot low on the MACD and when the RSI was below 30, indicated by the line turning to a blue or a cyan color. So I coded it up that way and the code for the blue line at the bottom uses only the MACD and the RSI. It ignores the squeeze because the source code for the squeeze is not available in Thinkorswim's platform and you would need to use the scanning tool to drop in the squeeze component of the scan and then you would use a second component for our modified indicator here that combines both the MACD and the RSI. So as you can see every time that the indicator shows that there is a two bar pivot low on the MACD histogram as well as the RSI oversold being below 30 we get a little spike here but look at what's going on with this TTM squeeze. There are no red dots in sight. Now I'm not going to bore you to tears by cycling through every single chart that I've reviewed, but I will scan through a few here, and you can see here's three spikes. There's no squeeze, there's no squeeze, and there's no squeeze on this one either. For those of you not familiar with the TTM squeeze, the squeeze is represented by red dots in the center line of the TTM squeeze indicator. So this bar right here is in the squeeze. This bar right here is in the squeeze. This series of bars here is in the squeeze. Anything that's green is not in the squeeze. So we'll scan through a few more here and you can, I'll just point these out. Notice that these spikes often occur with a reversal in the TTM squeeze histogram. The fact when you have the MACD turning positive and the RSI oversold is usually coinciding with a reversal in the histogram of the TTM squeeze not while the TTM squeeze is in force. Of 
Okay, so you get the idea. So trying to combine the TTM squeeze, the red dots, along with this uh, indicator of the histogram turning positive on the MACD and the RSI being oversold below 30, they don't line up. And this could be the problem the gentleman was having. It may be why he struggled trying to produce signals with the scanning tool because the signals are removed by several bars. If you can imagine, look at this. Uh, you've got the MACD reversal and the RSI oversold here. And then you've got a, almost a dozen bars before you get a TTM squeeze. I will show you one chart where I did find that the signal occurred while the TTM squeeze was in effect. There it is right there. Of all the charts that I reviewed, that's the only one I found where the TTM squeeze was in effect while the signal produced. So regardless, what I'll do is I'll show you how, how the code was constructed and then I'll show you how to assemble all this together into a scan. Okay, so before we go to the scanning page, let's go to studies, edit studies. I will go ahead and click the scroll icon for the custom indicator that I have on the bottom of the chart displayed with the blue line. And I'll show you the MACD component is here. I just copied and pasted it straight out of the MACD indicator in Thinkorswim. And then we have the RSI component here. So I've taken two indicators on the Thinkorswim platform. I've copied the source code and pasted it into this custom indicator. The only thing that I've added are the three statements below, highlighted here. I created a two-bar pivot MACD, and this language is simply saying the current bar of the MACD is greater than the previous bar, and the previous bar of the MACD is greater than the bar before that. And so all it's doing, every time you see these numbers in the brackets, it's going back in time. So going all the way back five bars, because the bar that we're on, the bar that we're evaluating, is bar zero. So we've got zero, one, two, three, four. So that's five bars. It takes a total of five bars to make up this signal, and it consists of two consecutive lower bars and two consecutive higher bars. And that is producing a two-bar pivot low on the MACD. Uh, let's see, the other thing here we've got RSI oversold, less than or equal to 30. And that's pretty simple, straightforward. And then what we do is we take the trend reversal is, uh, is defined here. This is actually the plot, trend reversal. And we plot the two-bar pivot MACD. And then what we do is we look back four bars. Essentially, that's what this means. We, we're going to evaluate the highest value of this signal, the oversold signal, for the last four bars, Okay, starting with the previous bar. We don't include the current bar when we're evaluating uh, highest in the previous series. And this is simply looking at whether the value is greater than 0, because 0 is false. 1 is true. So all we want to know is, has this signal been true in the past four bars? All right, because that way we want to give enough room in case the two-bar pivot MACD low occurred, you know, sometime after the RSI was oversold. A lot of times, by the time you get a reversal on the MACD, the RSI has come up above the 30 range, and then you wouldn't be able to capture that whole signal together. Okay, so now let's go to the scan page, and I will show you how to put these together into a scan. Now, if you want to reset this, grab this uh, button over here, this round button up here, and just select Reset. And remember, it's not it's warning you. You're going to lose any changes that you've made. I'm not worried. I've got this saved to my scan list. And it populates the default startup settings. So I'm going to remove these two. And I'm going to change the uh, first one to the last price. I always like to do this with virtually all of my scans. I like to define a limit to the current price of the underlying because that is the immediate, that's the first filter and it helps to narrow things down. The other thing I like to do is I like to add 
let's see, it's an add study filter, and then it's going to be a volume, and it's going to be the average volume. And what I do is I just take the 10-day uh, simple moving average of the volume, and I say it needs to be greater than 500,000. And those two filters are usually how I begin every single scan, because they sort of filter out a vast majority of the stuff that I'm not interested in. We can look at all stocks, and if we want to filter this down a little further, we can say all optionable. Why would you do that? Well, maybe you're trading options. Some might say, well, I'm not trading options. I want to see all stocks. Well, if you stick with optionable stocks, one could make the argument that you're dealing with the stocks that tend to be more institutionally traded. Higher volume, more popular, more activity. Again, that's not investing advice. That's just a reason why would someone choose that over something else. And this is probably a good time for a disclaimer. Uh, everything I'm displaying here is not to be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any instrument or any fund of any kind. No financial instruments are being represented here. I'm merely trying to instruct you on how you can build a custom scan, build custom indicators, and use the tools that are provided by your broker. All right, that said, let's move into the next step. We're going to add another study filter, and we're going to add licensed studies, and we're going to add the TTM squeeze. There are no parameters to be adjusted. It simply tells you if the stock is in a squeeze or not. We're going to leave both of these to daily, and let's go ahead and hit the scan button and see what kind of results we get. Okay, great. We get 21 stocks that are currently in a squeeze. In other words, they have a red dot. Let's see if we took Apple. Let me go back to our charts and type Apple for our stock. Then we would see on the final bar of the daily chart one red dot. So that's what the scan is picking up. The fact that there is at least one red dot to the far right of the chart. So we've proven that we get results with the TTM squeeze scan. Great. So let's add the rest of the code so that we can scan for our other component, which is the MACD reversal and the RSI oversold. Let's go back to charts, studies, edit studies. I'll hit the scroll icon for our custom indicator. I will copy all of the code. We don't need the first line. I will right click and select copy, press cancel twice, go back to the scan and now that it's copied to the clipboard I will add another study filter and this one I will click the pencil icon and I'll go to the ThinkScript editor and I will highlight this so that we can delete that and then paste in the code and the last step is to change this to the word scan. That's what the scanning engine recognizes as long as the one, only, one and only plot, the plot that plots true or false values is called scan, then it works. Okay? So if you need the details for this, again, it's in the other video. The one that I did, it shows step by step how to build these yourself. I encourage you to check that out if any of this stuff is not immediately familiar to you. Press OK to accept. And now we've added that custom study in, and our code will then be executed along with all the other filters. So first we're going to filter by dollar amount, then we're going to filter by volume, then we're going to filter by scan, uh, squeeze scan. And you can see we've only got 21 stocks that are currently in the squeeze. Now let's see if there are any stocks that are currently in the squeeze that also fit our criteria of a MACD pivot low and RSI oversold at less than 30. We'll press scan no matching symbols. Well, maybe we've been too restrictive, so let's open this up. All stocks. So now we're not filtering anything other than volume and price. Press scan again. No matching results. So you might be saying, well, it's not working. The custom code isn't working. But what you can do then is you can delete the squeeze scan and now all we've got 
are the price filter, the volume filter, and our custom code. We'll press scan again. Now we can see we've got five results. So let's go ahead and plot some of these. Uh, CAR and CERN. Let's go look at our charts just to verify that it's giving the results we expected. So we expect to see a little spike over here that the blue line spikes from a value of 0 to 1 indicating a true condition. And if you look at this we've got the two bar pivot low on the MACD and the RSI was oversold within the four bar period. So we've got a true condition there. And let's see, we've got another stock to put in, CERN. And again, we find our little spike here from 0 to 1, indicating we've got the MACD pivot low, as well as the RSI oversold. Let's see, let's go back to our scan page, and we've got a couple more to punch in here, CPA and FLDM. And the last one, TRCO. All right, same thing. So we verified that the results of the scanner are correct. And I believe what we're going to find is that if we scan this every day of the week for the next year, you're not going to have very many signals if you combine the TTM squeeze with this particular indicator, the MACD pivot low and the RSI oversold by 30. It's just not going to show up very often at all. Now, if that's what you want, I showed you how to build it. That's great, but uh, don't expect a lot of signals to show up. It's a very, very, very rare occurrence, and it's just because of the alignment of the two groups of indicators. The TTM squeeze is occurring at different, um, how we, should we say, different phase of the oscillator, okay? And that's really the main reason why the two don't line up very well. So there it is. Hope it helps. If you need help uh, understanding how to do this in more detail, again, there's another video. Right now I'm going to link to you another video. What I'm going to do is take this uh, custom scan. I'm going to remove the word squeeze from it. So it's going to say scan MACD RSI. I'm going to export it to a file. I'm going to upload it to my uh, Google Drive. And then I will post that link in the description of the video so that you guys can download this custom indicator and install it on your Thinkorswim platform. So if you need to know how to install a custom indicator that you download, let's say from my Google Drive, then watch that video that I'm linking above, Thinkorswim display name of saved chart. So that's all I need to show you for now. Hope it helps. Take care. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hon-tech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks and take care.